Welcome back to Coffee Craft. Uh, I'm Auntie Sarah, and today we've got Auntie Christine Hello. to go through a new crafty tutorial with us. Uh, and today we're going to do a, I'd say like handicraft? Yeah. Or begin our paint project. Mm -hmm. The end product here is a celebration plate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Handy dandy prints from our uh, tutorial. It's going to be two different things we need to cut out. You are ready to get crafty. Roll up our sleeves, grab a cup of motivation. <laughs> Here, cheers. <laughs> Not hot for me today. You need the plate, a few different paints, paint brushes. First step we'll do is just get cut in here. We recommend to make it the easiest for you, especially if you're trying to use this guide directly on your plate, is to cut along the black lines because then you can have a general guide for where you want it to go on the plate. We have three different pieces here. The nice part about cutting on the black line too is it doesn't have to be perfectly on the edge. It's just a guide. I've taped the design face down to the front of the plate where it is the side you're going to eat off of. Uh, and then we're going to paint on the back side of it. Um, and that helps the mirrored image that we've printed out become legible when we've painted mirrored on the back. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> It'll all come together, don't worry. Yeah. The other important note before you get started that I forgot to mention is that it's good to wash your plate oh. before you paint it. <laughs> and you'll notice this side piece, if you're wondering where that fits in, the space on either side of the lettering, um, the way that we have the design set up, there's a little section of sprinkles. You can put this on here if you like to give an idea of how you can align those and spread them out, or you can also just shower sprinkles to your heart's content. I think this would be a really fun craft to do with kids. Yeah. I bet like you could go like off script a little and put like some of their favorite designs on it. If you could print out like a picture of their favorite Pokemon or whatever. Mm -hmm. They could have like a custom plate. I agree. Or even if they do, if you have one that's small, you can do um, thumbprints. You know, that way it's kind of special and helps you to remember how tiny their thumbs are at certain stages, but um, also oh lets them. What if you put the paint on your cat's paw? Oh, stop. And make paw print plates? That would be so cute. <laughs> oh. I'm telling you guys, the <laughs> possibilities are endless. <laughs> oh, because yeah, you could put it right in the center too if you wanted. I actually did that with a different plate. I made a Father's Day plate and had hand prints in the center. Um, which, you know, it's always exciting when you take small children and put a whole bunch of paint on them, but <laughs> I digress. It was a really fun way to have a special gift for family and also have the boys included in the gift giving. Oh, we have some palettes over here. And these are nice to have, but if you're on a tight budget, you can use a paper plate. We are going to use an enamel paint. And this is an oil-based paint, which is going to allow it to be dishwasher safe after we cure it, which is how I like to live my life. <laughs> I think, I think I might try doing the lettering with a paint pen first and see how it goes and then add my sprinkles with color. So these are um, another option, oil-based paints. Good old-fashioned paint pen. That's right. Just make sure it doesn't say water-based. I can bake. I will try to paint the words. Because Sarah is skilled. <laughs> I'm risky. <laughs> so I have a bunch of tools here that are a mix of painting tools and sculpture tools. Um, I find a lot of times if you buy a bunch of supplies for one craft, you can use it in a lot of other crafts. <laughs> so this is just like a rubber tip. It's not even really a brush, but I'm gonna play with this, you know, play with inspiration here. Let that inner child out and see how this goes. Hopefully it goes well. 
Otherwise, I'm going to wipe it off and write it with a paper. It's going to be fine. Ooh, the offset is fun. <laughs> so the glass is a certain thickness, and that's making an offset. So like, my brain wants to just keep pushing until I get to the paper, but I can't because there's a piece of glass in there. It's like a mind Indeed. game. Another tip for me to you. I find that I need to take a deep breath before I do painting or before I do lettering especially because I put so much pressure on myself to have it be perfect and then I start having my hand shake and I get frustrated when something doesn't work. So we're just going to have fun. Mm -hmm. Do the best work. Enjoy the process. For the handshake issue, I was talking to my Aunt Sue. She's an artist. She does many beautiful oil paints. Mm -hmm. And I asked her how she gets all of those beautiful swirls and curves and other things that she does just look effortlessly painted. <laughs> and she said the trick is, you know, you don't just freehand everything. If this was the wall, her wrist is against the wall and it's just this motion. It's not a mm. whole arm motion. Yeah. So. Yeah. Auntie Sue helping out. <laughs> that's right. I think that's the fun part about being in a crafting community is you get to learn oh, yeah. so much from other people. Everybody has a tip. Yes. <laughs> you just gotta ask. <laughs> They'll be happy to share. That's the other tip. Have, whenever you're painting, have a little bit of paper towel or a rag if you prefer, just in case things go wrong, because it just happens. I can wipe it off now. Can't once it's baked. <laughs> So if you've never used a paint pen before, I recommend you start with the cap on, <laughs> and then you shake it side to side, it should rattle. That's, there's like an agitator in there that's like loosening up everything. Then when you take it open, the first time you open it, this tip may look like clear. Um, mm. You just push down on it and the tip itself collapses and the paint can pour through the tip. Mm -hmm. and you should be able to see dots, but it may take a few tries the first time. Mm -hmm. Maybe being dyslexic is a good thing <laughs> for this particular project. Wow, this is so easy. First and backward and upside down. I suppose we'll find out when we flip it over. The, Which the, one of us has the better upside down backward cursor? <laughs> But it could be. Very good. <laughs> yeah. And if you couldn't tell already, this is an excellent craft to do with a friend. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't already put two and two together, 
And this is the same Auntie Christine who's been posting a lot to the social media, posting a lot to the blog. Uh, she's been helping me out since the beginning, but she's recently joined the team full time. I'm sure you'll see more of her. Yes, I'm excited to excited to be a part of what we're doing here. I have been inspired by Sarah for many years. <laughs> so it's fun to be able to be on this journey together and to be able to create and contribute to the, the fun that we provide for you guys. We have a little bit of fun along the way too. One thing you should usually have alongside your painting supplies when you're painting is a little cup of water. Mm -hmm. Helps it keeps your brushes clean as you go. But since these are oil based, uh, it may also be helpful to have a container of turpentine to clean your brushes afterward. Um, sometimes oil paints can really just get into the bristles and hold on to there. They won't dissolve in water because oil and water don't go together. Um, Which is kind of the goal. <laughs> that is the point. <laughs> But it means that cleanup is just a little bit more effort. At like art supply stores, you can usually get a turpentine container that's not very big and like there's like a strainer in it, so you just like, as Bob Ross would say, beat the hell out of it. And the nice thing about once you take the guide off is you can see a little bit more clearly if you want to add something. Celebrate. It's your oh, I got oh, you. Wait, Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Okay. It's your special day. So I'm going to go back and straighten up my eye and it. Ooh, yes. It's a it special good. day. Oops. Oh. Can I do it? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Braver than I. I really like that insert in the middle. So now we wait. We How wait. long do you suggest we wait? The instructions for the enamel paint in particular suggest you wait 24 hours. I can imagine if you're using just the paint pens because it's not as thick that you probably don't need it. It would be wise to refer to the manufacturer instructions. <laughs> Disclaimer. Um, to make sure. But I know part of the reasoning that they put on their website for why to wait the 24 hours is to let all of those layers of the acrylic dry mm -hmm. before you cure it. Back in the day. The next day, Auntie Christine has instructed me to do open up your oven, put your plates inside the oven, then turn on your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And once that's preheated, you can then start your timer for 30 minutes. So that's what we're gonna do today. Bake well. I'll go up here, turn this to bake. 350 is natural for my oven. Start. It has been 30 minutes. So I'm going to turn off the oven and I'm going to let everything cool down. So to do that, I'm just gonna open up the oven here. Just kind of let everything come. A nice cool temperature, nice and slowly. We don't want the glass to crack. Number one rule here. Made it back. Well, I am very pleased with how it turned out. I knew from previous experience that the acrylic would do well. I was very pleased to see how well the color was maintained. It's even scratching, like I can't even mark the paint with my nail. I'm looking forward to being able to celebrate various things with our plate and uh, would love to see what you guys do with it, the way you create it. Check out our socials if you make it, you know, tag us. We'd love to see it. Um, Absolutely. And we look forward to the next crafty plan. Bye-bye. <laughs>